with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for the mortgage voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show, for listening to us each and every week. If you want to see this show, you can go to YouTube. Jeff Barton, the mortgage voice, is on YouTube. Been there for years, numbers of shows, hundreds of shows. You can look back to see what kind of shows we were doing Oh, a year ago, six months ago, eight months ago. Uh, the reason I suggest that is because we've had a lot of different changes within the mortgage industry over that time period. And we look to, obviously, uh, more changes coming as we push through the year, uh, whether it's, you know, having to do with inflation, whether it has to do with uh, interest rates rising, whether it's the Fed interest rates or whether it's the mortgage interest rates. And those are two distinctly different things that affect each other mm, a little bit, but not necessarily um, if this goes up, that goes up. So interesting things to talk about in the show. So if you want to see us, if you want to go back in history and see us, go to YouTube. Uh, Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, that's where you can find me. Okay, so... I'm, I'm coming to the show today, and I'm, I'm here in a great studio up in Ventura County, California, and I want to say hi to my friends at KCAA, those great people who deliver the show to the Inland Empire and everybody out there. Hi. Um, I really appreciate you listening, as I said. So I'm, I'm driving here to the show and trying to figure out exactly uh, what I was going to talk about other than the notes of uh, what's happening in the industry. And I was thinking, you know, there, there are so many changes that you go through in life. And I know young people who are listening to the show, probably first time home buyers or prospective home buyers are anxious to hear whatever the rates are today and whatever the programs are. People who are obviously uh, uh, raising kids, maybe some high school kids, they have, they have some different requirements maybe they need a, a little bit bigger house maybe they need some other things uh to educate themselves about maybe taking money out do i do a second do i do a refi how, how do i do that access my equity in my house and of course there's older people people my age and above who are thinking you know maybe it's time to downsize this is a great market to sell your house in and i'll probably get the highest best price today than i that i'm going to be able to get or at least pretty close to it and these different areas in life and how how the mortgage rates and how the mortgage programs and how money in your house or equity in your house, how it affects your lifestyle and how much of it do you think about on a daily basis in terms of trying to use that equity and what you're going to do with it. Uh, it's, it's taxing, and most of us are not professionals in that particular area. Anybody contemplating that usually has a reason that they're taking money out of their house. Oh, my gosh, kids need college fund. All right, let's take money out of our house. Oh, my gosh, there's a health emergency. I need this money, and I need it today. i got to take it out of my house. Or I want to lower my payments, so I want to go to a longer-term type interest only, and that's what I want to do. So what is your particular issue, and where is it you're at? What are you thinking about right now when it comes to housing, when it comes to the interest rate on the loan that you're going to get for that housing, and what are your needs? Remember that the professional that you use and choose has to have your best interest at heart. And so having these types of conversations with them, being honest, being upfront, letting them know exactly what you're doing so that they can get you into the correct program with the correct payment. And I can't stress that enough, especially in uncertain times. What do I mean by uncertain times? All right, let's get into a, a little bit of the statistics that I have here so that you can understand what I'm talking about. 71% of Americans are setting more money aside than they were a year ago. 71% of all Americans are setting money aside, meaning that they're putting it in their mattress or in their bank accounts or wherever you put money when you want to have it readily available if you need it. And the reason that is, there's only one reason, recession fears. Now, why are there recession fears? We see unemployment, the lowest it's been in forever, 3.5%. Well, there are signs and have been signs and predictions, and there have been predictions for a year that this particular inflation cycle has caused the Fed to raise their short-term interest rates, which in turn will cause a recession because 
The only reason the Fed wants to raise rates is to slow the economy. Now, as we all saw when we we didn't see the Fed do it early enough, is that inflation caught fire and was at 9% a year ago. 9%. And that's still killing people out there, and I understand that. So if you couple the 5% inflation that it is today, as well as recession fears, you get fear in the marketplace, and that's where a lot of Americans are right now. They're afraid that there may be a recession that may take their job. Now, there are, there are a lot of counterpoints to that. One of the major counterpoints is, wait a second, we have unemployment of 3.5%. We have 1.6 jobs available for anyone looking for a job. Well, the underlying to that is, three months ago, it was 2 to 1. So that number has come down a lot, from 2 to 1 job openings to 1.6 per job opening. Meaning if you're looking for a job, there are 1.6 jobs available for you. Three months ago, there were two jobs available for you. Now, that alarming number, even though we know that there's 9.5 million jobs out there going unfulfilled, could easily change. Now, in my particular industry, in this industry, in the um, mortgages and um, real estate business, we've seen, you know, obviously huge downturns. I think last week I I read out about four or five different companies that were really – Either, either merging or have been bought or have lost huge amounts of money in the first quarter of the year. I think United Wholesale, which is they and Quicken or Rocket Mortgage, they trade back and forth as to who's the biggest. But United Wholesale lost a ton of dough in the first quarter last year. Uh, this year, rather, not last year. Another one, Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper is a company that um, services a lot of loans. And, there, and you may – okay – In the marketplace, when times are tough in the lending business, we see a lot of mergers, we see a lot of acquisitions. Mr. Cooper just bought HomePoint. Now, HomePoint was one of those companies that went public not all too long ago. There are five or six that I think I rattled off, uh, United Wholesale being one of them, and obviously Rocket Mortgage being another. And the the stock price and the share price, they're trying to get the public to fund those particular companies in order that they either do their expansion or they meet their net worth requirements in order to be able to service loans. Whatever it is, Mr. Cooper just bought HomePoint, which was one of those companies that went public. And they paid $324 million in cash. And apparently, that was a bargain. Now, I don't know the finances of a lot of these larger companies. I do not know the wherewithal by which they're judging whether this is a good deal or a bad deal. But when I read that $324 million is a good deal and that they actually are picking up a company on the cheap, that leads me to believe that the marketplace for mortgages is obviously, as I was saying, not in great shape. And that's true with the mortgage industry. It's true with the real estate industry. And it may be true soon enough in industries that you're thinking about, which is why recession talk is something that is the mainstay of what we're talking about here. We talked about the three groups of people that are interested in possibly refinancing or downsizing or taking money out of their house and and several dozen different ways that you can be able to do that. But the main reason to be able to do that is, like I said, 71% of the people in the U.S. are putting money aside because they're afraid that the economy, the jobs that are out there, that recession is coming. And nobody wants to get short on, uh, get caught short uh, with having cash, especially if recession is the actual thing that's going to be happening. Now, when are we going to find that out? Good point. When are we going to find that out? Well, as we move closer and closer to midpoint of the year, we're currently on a couple weeks that went uh, away from the end of May, uh, and obviously the end of June is uh, second quarter will be finished. We'll get closer and closer to that answer. Uh, The Fed, they may continue raising rates. I think we've got one more in us, and then maybe some pause and possibly by the end of the year some reduction, especially if we do see that recession coming in Q3, Q4. Um, I think all of these are in play, but I think as a result of this large number of people holding on to cash, that in turn does exactly what the Fed wants you to do, which is slow the economy down. Two-thirds of the economy is consumer spending. If consumers are putting money in their mattress or in their bank, they're not spending, so we're going to get that 
that inflation fighting downturn in the economy. Question is, how long and how hard? I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show where we provide to you information on mortgages, the availability of funds, what's happening in the real estate world, and all sorts of other things. Listen, if you want to see this show, you can go to Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, on YouTube, or you can go to themortgagevoice.com. That's our uh, website for the show. On that, you'll see not only the shows themselves, but you'll see uh, some profiles of the guests we have on. You can contact them directly, and uh, a lot of times that's the best way by which you can get answers to any of these questions, and certainly you can get them from the guests we bring on to the show, and uh, today is no exception. Bill Orr joins us, who is from Malibu Funding, and uh, I want to bring him on right now. Bill, how are you? I'm great, Jeff. How are you doing today? I, I'm okay. Thank you very much. I just, uh, I'm trying to figure out where the economy is going, what's happening with inflation, what's going on with all these distractions uh, that really affect uh, purchase and buyers' mentality when when wanting to buy a house. Uh, So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's happening. Let's say I'm a renter, and and I'm somebody who's been renting for a number of years and really wants to be able to get out of that and get into something where I can own. I'm tired of renting. Prices keep going up. If I don't get in now, uh, I may never get into. What's your advice to some of these types of borrowers? That's that's a great question. So the advice is to jump now. Right. Get into a house any way you can. I don't want to get into specifics, but I bought my house in 1989. And what it's worth now versus what it's worth then is insane. <laughs> and you know what happened? I just bought it. And I made my mortgage payments. We fixed it up here and there, but it wasn't like I put all this money into it. Actually, we did over time. But right. the main thing we did is we just bought it. We made the payments, and the economy, economy goes up, economy goes down. This president, that president, right. this uh, Federal Reserve chair, chair, it doesn't matter. The real estate is going to go up, and the, house, the, the, the worth of our property right now versus what we paid for, the the difference is incredible. So my point today is what we're going to talk about is if you listen to the show right now and you want to be in a situation where, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you've picked up hundreds of thousands of dollars of the equity uh, in your house, means it's worth more than what you paid for it, you have to get into a house at all. Anyway, you can rob Peter to pay Paul, just do it. So here's me, a couple ways we could, go ahead. Before we get into the, the specifics now, I know you have a, a number of different programs or ways by which somebody can do that. But the first and foremost, I want to drift back to that time in 89 where you purchased your house. And maybe this will give some insight to people who are out there still on the fence. What was the actual impetus other than I want to buy a house? I mean, because there's that psychological barrier everybody has. It's fear. How do you get past that? Or do you, you know, give give us some insight as to what you did? <laughs> well, our case is kind of funny because my wife and I are both in the business. Uh-huh. And we were so stressed out during that process. <laughs> Even right. though we're in the business, we are like, you know, we had a few arguments going back and forth. It's stressful, man. Yes, if you haven't is. done it before, it's stressful. But if you've got a great realtor and if you've got a good loan officer like myself, I've been doing this a long time, 27 years now, we can help you through it. And if you have questions about what to do, how to do it. I'm not sure. I'm a renter. I've never bought a home before. What do I do? Call me. Call Jeff. Call your neighborhood mortgage broker, and they'll be able to help you through it. But the point is you have to get in, and you just have to do it because you want to be in a position years from now to have built up, uh, for many people, for many Americans all across right. the country, the, the biggest port source of value of their life is their home purchase. That's a that's a good point, and I and I would all tag that with you know, ninety nine percent of millionaires in America did it through real estate purchases. So exactly right. I mean, not everybody's going to be a tech guru and come up with their own right. website design to be a <laughs> right. millionaire. Most people, if you're just a regular working person, whatever, you're going to build value by owning your own home. This is the way to do it. Okay, let's get into some specifics. Give us an example or two of uh, some of the programs or something that might be able to help these first time. Uh, home buyers, uh, renters make the transition. 
Well, the, the first one is we're going to is a down payment assistance program. There's a, a bunch of them. We're not going to get into the specifics right now, but just so you know that there are down down payment assistance programs available throughout the state. Some cities or counties will have will even have add-ons just for your specific city or county. But uh, we're going to we're going to pick on the big the big retail banks Chase Wells Fargo Washington Meet or not Washington Mutual Chase Wells <laughs> those, those big those big banks right. you know, they're not going to have all these various programs where us Jeff like you and I and a lot of other mortgage brokers we do have access to these down payment assistance programs so if you've got decent credit and if you've been on your job for a while you, you, you let's not let the money to buy hold you back there are down payment assistance programs available. The next would be either uh, a three or three and a half percent down payment. So if you're listening at home, here's how you figure that out. You get your cell phone out, your calculator on your cell phone. You, you take a look at a house and online that you see that you'd like to buy. How much down payment will it be? You take the purchase price and you multiply it times point zero three five. Purchase price times point zero three five in your calculator. It's just that simple, and that'll tell you what your three and a half percent down payment will be for that house. That's a good place to get you started. Okay. Then from there, so you don't have to have twenty percent down payment. That's a bunch of nonsense. Good point. Yeah. You get in from you know maybe a half a percent or a one percent down with the down payment assistance. You can get in with a three or three and a half percent down payment with many of the first time buyer programs. Then you can get into the five percent down, the ten percent down, or twenty percent down. You hear people talk about if you have the money. Of course, that's that's a good option for you. Um, FHA is a great first-time buyer program, so the great thing about FHA is they allow for maybe your credit isn't so great. They'll allow for that. I'm helping a client buy a house right now whose credit score is 591. Wow. And they're, they're going to be signing the loan documents next week. Wow, that's interesting. I was just going to ask you, how, how low does FHA go? And, and you kind of just nailed it right there. Well, they'll even go lower than that. Oh. Um uh, you might have to have a little bit more of a down payment, and much of our business right now, Jeff, as you know, is computerized. Yep. So we put all this data into the Fannie Mae computer, and if the Fannie Mae computer likes it, you get an automatic electronic approval. There's another way we would call old school where the loan is manually underwritten. So there are a couple options about low credit scores. So the bottom line, if you have a desire to buy a house, call me. Call Jeff for your paper mortgage broker. Because a lot of us, like myself, we have experience in helping clients get through that. We'll say we talk right now, and your credit's less than perfect. I will be able to give you specific things on what to do, what to pay off, how to dispute, things like that, so that three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, you're starting with a gun, you did the work, and now you're ready to buy because your credit's in order. You know how much money to save. So there's those type of things, too. So just pick up the phone and call us. That's the best thing you can do for yourself, honestly. That's a, a, very interesting. Now, I had a question about it. Uh, it comes up to me all the time now because people tend to never shut the news off when they're stressed. You know, it's one of the things that you can do to, to de-stress is to take the stressors out of your life. But people tend to do the opposite. So just quickly here, uh, the credit default that may or may not happen. Uh, uh, and how it will affect not only the real estate market, but certainly the mortgage interest rates. What are you telling your clients now? I haven't really got into addressing the credit default thing yet. I mean, that's going to okay. happen on its own. And it's kind of like you think about the stress, like why are we going to stress about something we've got no control over? If it happens, yeah, it happens. that's right. That's and, right. And the bottom line is for people, it, we'll say, for example, that it does go that, that, that there are some default rates. What does that mean to a potential home buyer? It means foreclosures right. are going to be up. There's going to be a lot of houses that are going to be coming on the market, which means the more houses on the market, the prices come down a little bit. So that's something we can't control. So as long as you have a stable job uh, and you have had a couple for a couple of years and you believe realistically you can make your mortgage payment just like you can make a rent payment, let's get you into the house so we can start building wealth for you and your family. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, I know that we also do uh, self-employed loans uh other things other than your conventional or FHA, uh, is that right? Yeah, so we let's talk quickly about our veterans. We love our okay. veterans, and yes, God bless you, and thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. uh, there are loans just for veterans, and I'm sure they know about, but if you have something in your family, man, there's no reason to not buy a house because we can get you into a house with 0% down payment. It's the best loan in the world is a yep. VA loan. I agree. Okay, and the next, we, there's a lot of people. I'm helping a client right now. They are self-employed, and they literally never thought that they will be able to buy a house 
because they're buying a very expensive house here in Los Angeles. It's not a million dollars, but it's in the high hundreds of thousands of dollars. And their income uh, only shows about forty or 50000 So, look, if you're self-employed, we all know how that works. You're going to tell IRS one thing, but we know, know you're making money another way. So right. there are loan programs specific for people who are self-employed. We've got uh, what we work in conjunction with a CPA to do a P&L program. We can also do 12-month bank statements. We can do 24-month bank statements and a few others. So if you're self-employed and, you, and if you write down a lot of your income and your income isn't really commensurate, I'm sorry, the tax returns that you report aren't really commensurate with your lifestyle, uh, there are loans for you. We can help you buy a home if you're self-employed. If your tax returns don't show that much, we can help you. If you're an independent contractor, if you're a sales rep, you're a lot of your expenses, we can help you. 1099 contractor, we can help you with those hey, Bill, of loans. Hey, Bill, I'm yep. sorry to jump in here, but uh, the uh, producer's yelling at me, so you got it. <laughs> I gotta you got to cut it short. Tell people how they can get in touch with you, though, before you leave. Of course, yes. My name is Bill. My last name is Orr, O-R-R, area code 818-406-4744. Again, 818-406-4744. Bill, thank you very much once again for coming on the show. Great, great information. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you. That's Bill Orr from Malibu Funding. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show. You know, each and every week we bring to you information about what's happening in the mortgage world. Um, you have a lot of decisions to make, and quite frankly, there's no place to turn if you just want to talk and hear about what's going on in the mortgage world. Now, historically, my particular show has been on the air for about nine years. If you go to... Um, uh, KCAA, and that's the radio station that broadcasts in the Inland Empire, some parts of L.A., Orange County, and out into uh, Palm Springs area, they have an archive on their show, and you can hear and listen to shows in the past. We also are on podcasts. You can go to YouTube, Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, and certainly uh, get all this information on the website, themortgagevoice.com. If you want to see and hear me, just listen to the show each and every week. Like I say, we try to bring to you the best of what we can, and it changes from week to week, which is why it's a must-listen if you're in the house-buying business. Uh, with me, once again, is a great person who knows way more about this than I do, uh, is uh, Carlos Velasquez from AHL Lending. He's the branch manager over there, and I asked him to come on There's just to uh, let us know a little bit of what's going on. Carlos, how are you? Great, great, Jeff. Thank you very Doing much. Doing great. Hey, and thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Okay, so you're in the business, been in the business a long time, and your um, your expertise about what's happening in the mortgage marketplace in your area, in your sphere. Tell us a little bit about what's happening at AHL and exactly what's going on in the marketplace in terms of volume of loans, types of loans you're doing. Well, currently right now, I mean, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, purchases when we can get them. I mean, you know, everyone's having a hard time right now with the inventory. I mean, prices are, are you know, are up there. Rates have, you know, have skyrocketed and yeah. um, just inventory is just really difficult. I mean, we're seeing, you know, a lot of people that, I mean, they want to get out there and they want to purchase. I mean, but there isn't any inventory right now. I mean, it's just, that's just the way it's been for, for a little bit. Um, we're hoping, I mean, that, you know, that, that things start to turn around here in the summer, but it's really hard to, really hard to say. Now, when, when customers come in and they're talking to you about loans, loan packages, what, what do you see as the major impediment? Is it the customer or just lack of uh, inventory in the marketplace? Uh, for the most part, just lack of inventory in the marketplace. I mean, it's still right. pretty competitive. I mean, I come from a real estate background, so the, the thing is that, um, you know, there's still multiple offers on properties. I mean, people okay. are still overbidding on properties. Um, so it's just that's just the trend right now, and it hasn't changed. I mean, it doesn't look like it's slowing down at all because, I mean, you know, there's just such a high demand for property. You know, we've seen in the marketplace a lot of lenders having some difficulties, especially in the first quarter of this year, some mergers and acquisitions. Things are uh, changing a lot. This has happened many times since I've been in the business, and I think you also see that. What do you see as some of the parallels between today and, let's say, back in 08? 
Well, the difference, I mean, from now in, in, in 08, I mean, just 08 was just very, it was just a whole different market. I mean, everybody was basically just qualifying based on their stated income. I mean, that's why they were called stated income loans. I mean, <laughs> right. pretty much nowadays, yeah. I mean, everybody has to, I mean, they're full doc loans. I mean, everybody, you know, all the, um, you know, basically all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed in regards to verifying all the income documentation, stability of, of employment, you know. Um, I don't foresee the same thing happening in, in you know, today or any anytime in the near future as to what happened back in 08. I mean, it was just a completely different market. I mean, you know, everybody usually right now, I mean, um, adjustable rate mortgages, I mean, are not the trend right now. I mean, everything right. is pretty much a fixed fixed rate right now. So these people are locked in, you know. Um, you know, everybody that's purchased in the last couple of years are locked in at a low rate. So, right. And I think that's what's causing the, the, the market. I mean, the I inventory. Agree. I mean, so many people that uh, own property right now, it's like, why am I going to go sell my property and pay double for a property right now and also maybe double or triple my interest rate that I currently have? Right. So that's what's going on. So people are just staying put as, you know, where they're at and, and, and not making that move right now. Yeah, and I think unlocking the the frozen aspect of the market is going to take a long time because, as you just said, if I'm somebody who bought, bought a house, maybe it's not my perfect house. Maybe it's not the house I wanted to live in and, you know, for the rest of my life. But if I'm paying 2.5% on a mortgage, there's no chance I want to go out there and spend more than I spent for that first house and obviously spend more on the mortgage interest rate as well. I'm just not going to want to do it. Correct. Correct. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine. I mean, it would be interesting if they could offer some sort of a bill. I mean, you know, come out with some sort of a bill or something where, you know, there could be some sort of like incentive for sellers that want to, you know, um, upgrade their homes, maybe, you know, get that reduction of rate. And that way it would open up the doors for a new potential uh, first time home buyer to buy, be able to buy their property. You know what I mean? So, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I earlier in the show talked about the home builder sell- uh, sentiment, how that's reached finally positive territory but really we're talking about we need wholesale new homes we we just need new product on the market because you know we've we've been short in the market since 08 because nobody wanted to get into a situation where they were overextended like they were at that time uh you know where they were rolling houses off especially in places like utah or florida or arizona uh nobody wants to do that las vegas uh so i think home building itself uh, obviously, we want to see more of it, uh, and I don't know if you see much of it happening down in your area. Yes, yes, we actually. I, there was an article that came out today. I mean, it says that you know that construction is at all time high. I mean, right. um, I don't know where I saw it, but I saw it somewhere. I think it was this morning. Every morning, I, I glanced through right. through all the articles, and every day is changing. So. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, uh, construction right now, it's in very high demand. Now, automation, now, uh, let's, we, we take a 10-year window here. Uh, 10 years ago, we didn't have the type of automation that we're going to have. And coming forward into a, uh, a mortgage company uh, near you will be uh, uh, artificial intelligence and the way that that can streamline a lot of processes. For instance, if you're talking to a lender, you may not be talking to a lender, you may be talking to some automated voice that will tell you or talk to you or and do you see this not only obviously it's going to expand the margin or or bring some of those savings to the borrower but do you see this as a trend in the industry coming uh soon or is it going to take some time well i think it's going to take some i personally think it's going to take some time but it is coming i mean yep. everybody's talking about it i mean you know just kind of like when social media came out you know which was like you know uh, maybe five, six years ago. I mean, everybody was just kind of surprised about what was going on and everybody that was doing it. People thought they were crazy and stuff, but it's now the trend. And now everybody's talking about, you know, people can get ahead of the game on artificial intelligence, you know, um, that, that that's, that's where it's going. Um, I, I don't, I can't say for sure exactly, you know, where, um, where it'll end up. But I mean, I think people still like the fact that they need to interact with people. So, mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of companies have tried it. Some of the larger companies have tried things like that. And for some reason or another, it just doesn't seem to always work. Um, you know, I mean, it's kind of like me trying to go on to, uh, 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 you know, customer service chat with, you know, a, a vendor or somebody. And, you know, you type in your question and, you know, it kind of redirects you to something. It's like, no, right. that's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> no, I understand. But, that's true, by the way. And and, and talking to anything online uh, is, is always frustrating because you're never quite sure who you're talking to or, or what you're talking to. 
Um, just Correct. wanted to talk to a person that can answer the question, which is, you know, what, which box do I choose, A or B? And they want to give you an explanation about 57 other things before you actually get to your question. Happened to me the other day. Very, very frustrating. And then you're on hold, of course. And I think these types of situations uh, will take some time to iron out. But I do believe that you will find, and you're you're in, in the business long, long time, and, and you, your, your expertise is in bringing a loan from A to Z, seeing it close out. Those steps in between there are some of the things that I'm talking about maybe not seen by the general public in general you know uh, on a daily basis but in terms of processing in terms of how the loan gets looked at whether it's credit score whether it's uh, AUS or whether it's any number of other processes uh, work related uh, checking uh, verification of uh, employment or income all these things can be done in an automated fashion through uh, uh, a pretty much without human beings. Uh, and I think that that integration is coming. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, no, absolutely. I, I think it is coming. I mean, I use, you know, chat, you know, whatever right. you call it, chat, GBT, whatever yep, it is. That's I what use it, is. it all the time because, you know, for, for certain scenarios, like, you know, I'll just type in, like, you know, an underwriting question or a guideline and rather looking it up myself on, on Google um, or, you know, usually like, you know, the, the uh, like an FHA uh, handbook or something. I mean, I'll just go to the chat um and the artificial intelligence i type in the question and it gives you the answer so right you know a lot a lot is happening uh jeff and it's coming and it's coming really fast so right. technology is i mean it's it's kind of hard to cut to keep up with it no it really is you know we're out of time here we're at the end of our rope uh but i'd like you to shout out your phone number so people can get in touch with you especially if they need uh, a great uh lender and a lender source at ahl yeah, yeah. My number is uh, 714-604-7600. Um, I can put you in, you know, in touch with one of our loan officers and, and uh, you know, that we'll be glad to help. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Carlos. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. You have a great day. I look forward to your show. Thank you very much. I'm Jeff Barton, the voice in the mortgage industry, and we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, for listening to us week after week, month after month, year after year. Yes, we've been on about nine years, hundreds of shows. If you want to hear or listen to any of these shows, several places you can go. Best place is KCAA. Dot com. You can go there and uh, listen to me and the archives that they have. I've been on that radio station for a long, long time. You can also go to YouTube. Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, is the show on YouTube. As I said, we shoot this for YouTube so you can see my pleasant face as well as the picture of our guests. Uh, if you want to see the guests a little bit more, you can go to the mortgagevoice.com, and that's our website. Uh, we're also on a number of different podcasts. Uh, Daryl, do you have a couple of those podcasts for us? I sure do, Jeff. We're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Radio.com, YouTube, PodClips.io, and the Mortgage Voices you spoke about. Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you, Daryl. Thank you very much. Okay, so that aside, I am Jeff Barton, and this is the Mortgage Voice, and uh, joining us who has been on the show many, many times, and I thank Levere Bracera for coming on once again uh, to help us really understand what's happening specifically uh, in this particular market in Southern California. Uh, Levere, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Nice to talk to you guys. It's been a bit. Yeah, I know. It has been a little bit of a while. I, I check on the cell phone, <laughs> and it said October. I'm like, can't be October. Is it really that long? <laughs> I think so, but it's always nice to with you guys it is and i appreciate it uh Liver is one of the top uh, real estate and mortgage professionals at malibu funding and really appreciate what she does for the business um give us your uh perspective as to what's happening both in the mortgage world i know that rates have really hurt a lot of volume uh but are we seeing any new types of business that are i guess used to the rates or getting used to the rates and they're not so high in their mind anymore if they can afford it well, like anything else, everyone just adjusts to what's going out. It's not like we have a choice, right? right. So uh, sure. um, if they're purchasing a house or they're selling, they, they you know, they're going to miss their 2%, 2.5, and they're going to have to acclimate to their new 5.75 or 6.5, whatever it is. But right. I think, you know, you know, there's really not a difference between 
the two, one always affects the other. The high rates affect the, the, the real estate. What's going on in the real estate is going to affect the rates, the mortgage industry. So, I mean, I was having a conversation with my uh, title rep just this morning, as a matter of fact, and well, a couple months ago, uh, there was maybe 100 defaults, NODs, notice of default that had been filed. As right. of a couple weeks ago, there's 300. And uh-huh. that's, in LA, that's in L.A. County, by the way. Right. So um, that will, you know, everything right now is supply and demand. So there would be more supply, which, there, you know, will also affect the rates. So um, there'll be less fighting over homes. You know, there'll be more uh, properties where you can make an offer on and you won't have 10 people fighting you for the same property. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, although it is discouraging, you know, to know that there's that many notice of defaults, but there will be more properties on the other side that will be available for, for buyers. Now, and well, hopefully it will bring the prices down some to stabilize them. Yeah, no, that's an interesting analysis. And, the, and the, that great fact that you went from 100 to 300, but 300 in a city of, you know, 10, 15 million uh, in the county is really uh, a drop in the bucket in terms of supply into the marketplace. If, in fact, those those houses even get to the market, you know, the way corporations sweep in, buy them all and then just rent them out and, and look at the margin that's, better that that's way. That's very, very true, too. But as 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 a seller, if I if I was to be in that same uh, situation, I wouldn't sell to somebody, you know, because they're going to buy them for pennies. But, you know, somebody who's going to sell their house, you want the most, especially in this market, you know, and you're going to want to get the most for the property. And I don't think those types of people want to pay the most. But um, I, I think when we'll get there where they buy the, the huge, um, uh, you know, packages of the foreclosures when we're, you know, if we were ever to be in another bubble, then that's where they, they rake them in. Okay, but interesting. I think right now. Yeah, huh? go- Go, no, I was just going to ask you a little bit about what was going on with the economy. You know, the, the dreaded pr- predictions of the uh, recession that is coming, that keeps on coming but never get here kind of thing, uh, and how that necessarily will affect supply and demand of, of the product in the real estate world. Well, it all depends where, where it lands, you know. I mean, if we could predict the future, well, where, I mean, I would be so rich. So, but, <laughs> you know, I'd but, have spent it already, so you know. <laughs> We'd have pre-spent it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I owe that money. What do you mean? <laughs> That's funny. So yes, yes. So we'll see what happens. You know, we're seeing things or hearing things that by the mid midsummer, what might happen if the right. you know Fed coin comes in. You know how that will that affect um, you know and how the transition right. would even affect. You know, as a, not only just as a nation, but as a world. So uh, it, it's interesting and scary, but, you know, one day at a time yep. and just go with, you know, it, however it happens, we're going to be here. And we just have to, like like you said before, we'll have to acclimate, we'll have to adjust, and and there you go. <laughs> Do you see a, a, a difference in uh, the type of loans you're doing today than you did two years ago? Well, you know, I'm very blessed. I am still busy. I have Great. way more purchased loans than I do have have uh, refinances. Um, but I also do real estate, so I do keep busy. But um, again, more purchased. Uh, I am still I'm seeing a lot of bank statement loans for self-employed. Okay. Uh, um, and you know, which the bank statement loans, as you very well know, you just supply 12 months worth of bank statements. Could be personal or could be business, and then. We add up all the deposits, we divide it by 12, and boom, there's your, you know, there's your income right there. So um, it's a great way for self-employed to get. So I'm seeing quite, quite a bit of that, um, and but a lot, since they raised the, the conforming loan limits, right. you know, it's really eased up so people can buy a decent house in San Bernardino. And, you know, as you know, there's a lot of nice areas in San Bernardino, River, sure. Riverside County, so... Those limits were kind of ridiculous to begin with. So yes, they were. It's nice to see them up. <laughs> yeah, I think they were still thinking uh, at last year anyway about uh, 2008 and 2009 when two thirds of the value of the homes went, you know, down. So they were never wanting to lend more, uh, especially when the prices there rose as you know as quickly as they were rising in L.A. and people were moving there. Demand got up, multiple offers on many, many different houses. So yeah, it's nice to see it. What what is the conforming limit out there now? I believe it's 726 and right. change. Right. And that's nice. I mean, you know, I have 
I have friends in Rancho and uh, a number of other places in Riverside. And so, you know, they're all happy that, that that's available because it brings in a whole new pool, pool of buyers. It, it, it does because in those like Chino Hills or right. Chino where you have homes over a million and Rancho too, I mean, uh, they would be stuck with a jumbo. If, even if they were at 700000 you right. know, that was kind of ridiculous. So it kind of limited the growth, I believe, in those areas for, you know, somebody would, you know, it limited buyers. Right. Is what it did. Right. Obviously, you know, if you're coming from some parts of Los Angeles where, you know, a million dollars, especially even in Orange County where it's over a million dollars, the median home price, and you want to move out to there, you want to be able to get the best loans you can possibly get. There's no reason why which the demand um, will be lessened uh, unless, of course, it's more difficult to get a loan that you can afford. And that's what was happening. Right. Yeah. Remember when they were like in the 400, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, you're going to buy a million dollar home. You have to come up with 600,000 yeah. if you want to conforming. And now, you know, it's, it's a much different ballgame. You know, 300,000 is a big difference. I, I agree with you 100%. Okay, prediction time. Where do you think we're headed in uh, the next three months? Do you think the Fed will uh, ease up on rates? Do we see a Fed cut by the end of the year, which would also help the mortgage interest rates go down? Well, what I'm hearing is that they are going to come down by the end of the year, that we should be in the upper fours. Wow. And you, know, you know as well as I know, we go into an election year, and yep. they always stop the rates. Yep, so, I, I agree. You know, don't, don't cry over your 7 or 6%. We'll see you in about six to eight, nine months, and we'll get it right back down for you. Right. I, I believe that. I think getting into the house is important. Looking forward to the refinance is great uh, because I do think that's happening, and I agree with your election year. I just I just think that what we're going to see is either by the first quarter of next year, we probably won't see anything happen because Fed doesn't like to get involved in politics, uh, even though, like what you said, is also true that we, we tend to see interest rates lower during election years. Absolutely. I've seen it. I've been doing this almost 23 years, every single election year, <laughs> always. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Hey, Levere, could you shout out your phone number away by people can get in touch with you, especially if they need a great person in the real estate world, mortgages or real estate? Yes, absolutely. My phone number is area code 626-712-9920, 626 626- Seven one two nine nine two zero. You can call me Liv if Levere is too hard for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, I would be glad and, and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Levere, very much for coming on the show. Always enjoy it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank nice you. Nice talking to you guys. Nice talking to you as well. That's Levere Becerra. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be uh, we'll, yeah. Hmm. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show. You know, each and every week we come to you, bring you information on mortgages, on real estate, some guests that come on the show and talk about specifics in their particular area of expertise. If you want to hear us on podcast, we are on any number of different great podcasts. And I think, Daryl, you have a list of those? I think I might uh, hear Jeff. It's Apple Podcast, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Radio.com, YouTube, podclips.io and the mortgagevoice.com. Okay, excellent. That mortgagevoice.com, that is our website. If you go there, you're going to see our guests that are on almost every week. You can get in touch with them directly or you can listen to the show. Podclips.io, great central location where you can go for all your podcasting needs. They have a number of different things. And by the way, if you have, you know, the want to do that, sign up. Tell them you like it, and you can get all the alerts of the different shows that you do like, whether it's health or finance, sports or lifestyle, any of these things, podclips.io, go there for your podcasting needs. Okay, I am Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice. Let's get right to the rates, talk a little bit about what's happening in the mortgage world. 6.69 is the 30-year fix, 6.05 is the 15-year, 6.34 is FHA, 6.40 is the jumbo rate, and 6.85 is the 5-1 arm. The, those are the mortgage rates. Uh, they are up this week a little bit. Uh, we were talking a little bit off air about how rates had been coming down for a couple of weeks, and we were seeing 6.5% as the 30-year fix, hoping for a continued trend downward, which had been going on for the previous three weeks. Well, this week, we see uh, mortgage rates tick up a little bit, and obviously that's uh, stressful news for those of you out there who have yet to lock your loans or you're in a purchase or you're looking for a home and you want to obviously get the most for your money. 
and not pay as much as you want to. But uh, the two-year is at 4.103. The 10-year is at 3.56. We are almost at a half a point in terms of the spread between the two and the 10, and uh, we still are predicting that recession, whether it's mild or whether it's not mild, probably coming in Q3 or Q4 this year. Um, The economy is slowing a little bit, people keeping money in their accounts, not spending as much as they were. So all of that really leads us to believe that, yes, we will get the slowdown, whether it tips into a recession or how much and how long is really um, about the Fed. The Fed may uh, raise their short-term interest rates one more time, 25 basis points, may cool off, hold on for a while and see what happens at the end of the year. If we go into a serious tail uh, spin, we probably will see a rate cut, although the Fed doesn't come right out and say that because that would make the stock market and everybody else go cuckoo. But uh, that's what I think would happen. I mean, this is coming into an election year, and the Fed doesn't like to do anything during an election year that would upset uh, that particular um, election cycle. So if they were going to cut, they probably would cut uh, by the end of the year, early in Q1, uh, before it got into silly season, which is, you know, the election cycle that's coming up. And by the way, the election cycle that comes up really is respondent to many things that are happening in the news. And uh, because this is such an unusually uh, volatile uh, group that we've had um, coming around, uh, same guys, probably the same time. How does that affect mortgages? How does it affect uh, the availability of real estate? Well, it's interesting. Um, I read today that the Home Builders Association uh, of America, let me just get it right for you so I don't screw it up. Let's see. Um, uh, Where is it? No, I don't want to read about the bathrooms in America, although that was interesting, too. Um, Home Builder Housing Market Index is up 5 to 50%. Now, we all know that any of these indexes at 50% means that we're in positive territory, which is the first time in five months that the home builder's sentiment, that is, if they uh, survey a bunch of people in the home building, whether it's Lennar or whether it's Aspen or whether it's um, Broad or, you know, any number of these larger uh, home builders, their sentiment of the positivity of how they feel about what's happening in the home building section is at 50, which is a positive. Uh, And it's, as I said, the first time in five months that it's been in the positive. Uh, And and it's the fifth month in a row that the home building housing market index is up. Uh, One of the reasons that they say, one of the main reasons that they say it's up is because there's such a lack of housing. Now, we were kind of predicting, not kind of, we were predicting at the beginning of the year, and this is why prediction in the uh, real estate world is so crazy. I don't know if you, whatever website you go to, there's always somebody that is the outlier that'll say, oh, no, 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 I know what's going on, whether it's Michael Barre or whether it's Jamie Dimon or whether it's uh, El Arain, uh, Mohammed El Arain, the uh, economist. All of them are predicting a certain thing, and it's usually an outlier of what the main body of uh, thought is. Uh, In this particular way, uh, the main body of thought about what's happening in the economy changes, and it's changed for me too. Uh, And I think because of that volatility, a lot of people are, you know, searching for security. Uh, One thing that you can do in any market to get security is own property, as everybody knows. We've said it, and all my guests say it who come on the show. They say, look, if you can get in and you can afford the price of the house and the monthly payment, what difference does it make what the rate is or what the cost of the house is? Uh, But because the uh, availability of housing that we thought would increase because the demand would be less and people wouldn't want to pay the high price and mortgage rates would be falling, we would get more housing in the market. Well, that didn't happen. Just the opposite happened, which means that the home builders who were afraid to build houses at the beginning of the year now are not so afraid. And the reason being is the demand is there. Look, we don't have enough houses for people. We're millions of houses behind of where we should be. And obviously, we see more and more opportunity uh, as we go forward in this year because fewer and fewer homes are on the market this year than last year. And last year was a terrible year for availability of properties on the market. So that's why the Home Builder Survey is what it is. It's up and it's at 50%, and that's probably a pretty good thing. Um, If jobs... Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, 
The unemployment is at 3.5%, but jobs available now, 1.6 to every available worker. That's down um, the lowest in two years. Now, we talked about this earlier in the show. Uh, one of the things I didn't get to was, what does this actually mean? Um, three things that it means, okay? If jobs uh, losses, meaning if, if this trend continues where fewer and fewer people are uh, available for work, uh, but the number of overall jobs available also falls, um, we are, yeah, we're signaling that the recession is coming. And that if that happens, then other dominoes fall, meaning that if one thing happens, we're going to see a one, two, three effect. We're not going to see this kind of, okay, housing's terrible, but mortgage rates are low. Or mortgage rates are low, uh, but there's no housing. All of these things, here's, here's number two. Car loans will default if jobless delinquency rate, the jobless delinquency rate on car loans up for the year. Okay, so a lot of people don't realize, but the second major purchase in most people's lives is are the car loans. Car loans you would have for a brand new car or a, new, uh, a used car. And these delinquencies are up. So if you get job losses, you're going to get car loan defaults. And as I said, the car loan defaults are already up this year. And that, these two things combining, this is what I say. It's a cascading domino effect. And I think that's, even though as confusing as it sounded when I said it, it that, that's really what worries economists. And I think that's why a lot of people are worried more about the economy now, even though the unemployment rate is so low. And the third one being uh, credit card debt. Now, credit card debt has topped $1 trillion, okay? Credit card debt, $1 trillion. Debt owed by consumers in the U.S. is $17 trillion. Now, that includes home mortgages as well, right? So just to give you an example of credit card debt and what it looks like today versus last year, in 2021, 2021, two years ago, was $108.1 billion that was paid in interest and fees. Sounds like a lot, right? Following year, 2022. The number was $133.1 billion interest in fees on credit cards. That means that people are borrowing more on their credit cards than they did the previous year. This year, going to be up again. And that's what worries me, worries a lot of people. Credit and how it's given and how we are able to, you know, lend money is all dependent on how people feel about the ability to repay the loan. All of these things are what's happening anyway there's a lot of stuff here i want to get to we'll try to get to it during um next week's show but i really appreciate you listening to uh me this morning uh, i'm jeff martin your voice in the mortgage industry and we'll see you next time you're listening to the mortgage voice with jeff barton for more on today's topic visit www.malibufunding.net Southern California's Mind Spring. The legend you love and the best talk. KCAA Loma Linda. KCAA Loma Linda. KCAA Loma Linda. The message of Brother Stair lives on here in Southern California.